Today I'm going to do a quick video and show you how to clean leather. I bought this purse the other day at a thrift store outlet, uh, the one where I did the I did a nostril cam video while I was on that outing, and it was a dollar seventy-five. It is all leather. Um, it's a fossil bag, so you know this was a nice purse at one time, but it's disgusting. <laughs> really, really disgusting. <laughs> you know that has seen some some action. This purse was well loved, but I can tell it's you know it's good leather. It's a good brand, so this is going to be good to um, recycle and make into maybe a journal cover or something. But I do want to clean it first. I started playing with some different ways to clean leather and came up with one that's actually working really well and thought I would share it. I did it on this bottom panel. You can see this is what the whole bottom looked like when I bought the purse and this side I cleaned. Um, it's not perfect. It will never be perfect. You know, this is not a suggestion on how to clean your your good leather jacket or your good boots or whatever. You know, this this is how to clean leather that you're going to repurpose um, because it's you know it is going to kind of wear on the leather a little bit. It's probably not really good for the leather, but you can get it clean, definitely clean enough to um, use for something. And I did half of the bag over here, and you can see a significant difference <laughs> in the way it originally was over here, and this is the section that I cleaned. So I will show you how to do that. But before I do that, I am going to go ahead and start taking the bag apart, uh, just because it's going to be easier to clean if I can lay it out flat. So. Um, I'm going to do that and I usually take these apart with a, I start with a seam ripper and I also have a pair of scissors on hand and I rip out the lining. I just start ripping all the seams. At first I decide which seams I don't want to rip. I don't want to rip this one because if I want to make this a book cover, you know, I might be able to use it kind of like that. So the seams that I want to rip are going to be this one. And this one, on both ends, I'll undo these seams, get rid of that, and of course all the lining. So let me do that so that I can flatten this out, and then I'll show you um, how I got it this clean. Okay, I'm about halfway done, and I've turned the purse um, wrong side out. This is the outside of the purse. This is the inside and I have pulled off the um, top trim and um, pulled out the lining and as you can see it's really messy and gross. You're not only going to have to um, cut through some stitches but you're going to run across some glued areas as well. They almost always glue some kind of interfacing into the purse in a couple different places to strengthen it. And that's what all this black stuff is. And it's just kind of gross. You just peel it off. Um, when you're doing that, I usually rip a few stitches, grab hold, and just yank. You do have to be careful, though, because leather's not indestructible. You can rip it very easily. And I don't know how many times I end up cutting through it with my seam ripper. So you do have to kind of be careful. It can rip and tear. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. Here's where I am. I'm going to continue to rip through these seams, and there's more of that weird reinforcement stuff in there. So I'm just going to go in and start um, cutting some stitches and pull on it, and then see if I can get it to start separating. And then just, you know, keep at it till it comes apart. I did want to mention that if you're buying leather to take apart like this, whether it's a purse or a jacket or whatever, you do want to make darn sure <laughs> that it's leather before you buy it <laughs> because you can no longer tell just by feeling. The um, simulated leathers that they have out now that are made with 
um, a PVC type material are really very good and it is very difficult to tell them apart from real leather just by feel because they feel like real leather. So when you're, you're buying a piece of what you think is leather, you want to look for a tag that says genuine leather. And on purses, it's usually inside. Let's see if this one had one. I'm not even sure if it did. Yes, genuine leather made in China. If it doesn't have a tag on it that says genuine leather, don't buy it unless you can actually see the other side of the leather. Usually you can't because they're all completely lined with something and you know I don't ever tear the lining of anything. If it's not already exposed I just I leave it. I don't buy it and take a chance. But if the lining is torn and you can see the other side and you can see that it's leather then you're good. Um, otherwise uh, just be really cautious because it is it's really hard to tell now sometimes I can tell by smell because you know you can smell leather has that leather odor to it but I'm really not that excited about sticking my nose inside a thrift store purse <laughs> you know <laughs> I would uh, it would have to be a really awesome purse that I'm just desperate to know for sure <laughs> before I will stick my nose in it. But sometimes you can tell that way if you're, you know, really <laughs> good at identifying that leather smell. That is one way. But, um, yeah, if it's important to you to have real leather, make sure that the item you're buying has a tag that says that it's real leather or make sure that you can see the back of the piece to verify that it is indeed leather because that simulated stuff is pretty darn good nowadays. Okay, here's what's left of my purse. And sometimes I will keep some of the parts that I take off. <clears throat> sometimes I won't. just depends on if I think I can use them. Uh, sometimes I'll, the zippers are good. And uh, occasionally I'll get some decorative hardware pieces that I'll keep. This one had a little key on it that says fossil and I'm gonna keep that and these two side panels I don't think I'm gonna keep I mean they are a little bit awesome I don't know if I can get these rings off I might keep these um, maybe but these rings are hard to get off. I bent them enough to get the handle off. What did I do with the handle? Did I throw the handle away? Oh dear. I think I did and I meant to keep it. Let me go take it out of the trash. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so if the handle or the strap is uh, structurally sound, I usually keep it. And uh, then, you know, whatever pieces or, or bits of hardware that I think I can use. I'll just have to debate about those. I don't know. For now, um, let me show you how to clean this stuff. What I have found that works well is Murphy's Oil Soap. You need Murphy's Oil Soap. You need some water. I usually do this at the kitchen sink, but that's not really conducive to filming, so here we are. You're going to need a toothbrush or, if you're more aggressive, a stiff scrub brush and a hotel key card or credit card or gift card some kind of little card like this what you're gonna do is let's just do this other half right here I take the Murphy's oil soap I usually just stick my toothbrush in there put it on during this process you are going to remove some of the dye on your leather. So if you're doing this on a piece of, you know, really awesome classy silver <laughs> leather <laughs> that you've got left over from the 80s, <laughs> don't be surprised if while you're working on it some of the brown starts showing through. 
and that can happen with leather of any color that uh, cows don't come in. <laughs> so yeah, if cows don't come in the color of your leather, um, you uh, might not get the best results. Just be aware. And some of the hook that is coming off right now, it could be dye. Some of it could be the dirt. A little both. You just don't know. But that's all you're going to do is rub this um, Murphy's oil soap into the leather really good. Just, you know, saturate it. Use your little brush to scrub it. Use your big brush to get more aggressive. Um, you, you know, be careful about if you have a really stiff brush, you don't want to rub a hole right through the leather. You can do that, so be careful. And also, this working on it like we are does stretch the leather a little bit. So be aware of that. I'm going to take my, I'm going to close this because there's a disaster waiting to happen. And I'm going to wet my little super scrubber here. And scrub. And you're not really going to be able to see anything at all happening at first because the leather turns dark when it's wet. So it's hard to see the dirt. So just kind of remember where the dirt was and scrub there. The bottom of the purse always tends to be the grossest. You've scrubbed a while. You've got it good and saturated. Then re-wet it. Go at it with the credit card. This is really what's going to pull most of that dirt out. And you can actually kind of see it happening while you're working. See all of this? Some dirt, some dye. That's all right. Let's work on that spot right there. Let me see if I can give you a really good example, show you a really good example of how this can work. Because I know it's really hard to see because the leather turns dark. Let me zoom in. Okay, zoomed in a little closer. There's a little goober right there. I don't know what that is. Let's just kind of work on it. Can you see? Almost gone. I'm going to put a little bit more Murphy's on it. And you can see that I am scratching aggressively with that credit card. And it does take elbow grease. It takes some aggressive scratching, but always keep in the back of your mind that you can scratch clean through your leather. So, be aware. Okay, I think that little teardrop shape goober is mostly gone. I can still see a little bit lighter, but I'm not going to know for sure what's gone and what's not until I finish um, scraping on this and rinse it off. So I'm going to keep doing that, and it's going to take me some time, and I'm probably going to have to do this at least twice because, you know, like I said, you can't really see what you got until you uh, rinse it. So that was ink right there. Can you see the the ink line? I don't know how this does on ink because I've not tackled that before, but let's just see. And I 
and I keep changing directions of the card of the way I'm scraping because you want to um, scrape against the grain in all different directions to get the stain out. And getting your leather wet won't ruin it. You know, cows don't ruin if they stand out in the rain. It, it's okay. <laughs> you can get it wet. It is easy to stretch it out of shape when it's wet. Keep that in mind, but it won't ruin it. That ink stain, again, is almost gone. It's a whole lot lighter. Seems like I can still see a little bit of it at the top. Yeah, that's looking much better. Um, this dark area along here, most of this will come off. And usually the leather on the bottom of the purse, you know, I mean, it's it's been through a lot. It has, you know, gets thrown around. It slides across stuff. It's this one looks like it's been abandoned under more than one bar stool at one time or another. I don't know. <laughs> so don't expect too much from it. But you can get it cleaner than it was. That's for sure. And when leather gets dirty and worn, it tends to get kind of uh, shiny like this. Yeah. You can see how it's turned kind of dark and shiny, which can be actually kind of a cool distressed look, but that's just a little bit more, not really distressed than I want it, just a little bit more gross than I want it. <laughs> I don't mind this shiny worn thing, but I want to make sure that it's clean. See, this is the top side of the strap, which is not nearly as bad. So, yeah, I'm going to clean that. But what you're going to end up with is still going to be distressed leather. It's just not going to be disgusting distressed leather. It'll be clean distressed leather. And that's okay. The card also squeegees a lot of the water out, so it gets lighter as you go and you can see what you got. Okay, I think that's good for our first go at it. I'm going to take it in the kitchen and just rinse it in the sink in warm water and let it dry. <clears throat> I may hit it with my heat gun to speed it up uh, so I can get this video finished. But um, let me go do that and then we'll see where we are. I just rinsed my leather in the sink. And if you want to speed up the drying time a little bit, you can squeegee off some of the water. And you'll squeegee out some more dirt and dye along the way, and that's okay. But this will make it dry faster. See, this helps a great deal to see what you've still got left to work on. My leather is now clean and dry, as you can see, and I think it really turned out great. You know, it's still got that distressed look, which I'm fine with, but it doesn't have that icky stuff all over it that makes it stiff and gross. Um, most of the stains came out. There were a couple over here that I really scrubbed hard on. And I can't find them now. There, I think, was one here and one here. There was some ink up here. I might, that might be a faint outline of the ink. I'm not sure. But anyway, most of the stains that I scrubbed on came out. And um, I'm really happy with it. When you get all of the icky 
worn, built up stuff off of there. The leather is really, really soft. And I'm still working on the strap, which has proved to be a little bit harder than I thought. <laughs> it, um, yeah, it was bad. I mean, you know, bad. I don't, let me, let me zoom in so you can see this. Okay, this is the strap. This is the worn part that's turned all dark. And I've tried to scrape it with the credit card and, and it just really wasn't doing much. So, I decided to bring out the big guns and I took it out in the garage and hit it with the sanding drum on my Dremel. <laughs> and that worked great! <laughs> it got all of that icky stuff off of there. And you can see See how hard, how stiff this is? It doesn't really want to bend because of all this stuff on it. And now it's just back to its natural soft self. If you do use your Dremel or, you know, a piece of sandpaper or an emery board, that'll work too. Just be really careful because you are removing some of the leather grain. Um, I would never use my Dremel on something like this because it will just sand right through it. But um, that is an option for these more difficult, uh, thick, heavy pieces like this. You can just get after it with a sanding block or some power tools, <coughs> and it works great. So there you have it. That is how you can um, buy some really cheap, gross leather and clean it up. Um, well enough to use. You know, it still has a distressed finish, but it's um, clean and soft and ready to go for a book cover or whatever you want to use it for. So that is your tip of the day. The end.